Hello everybody, so today with me is uh, Hannah Hartz and uh, she has a YouTube channel where she shares her story about recovering from anorexia and you can go and check her out but today uh, she is here with me to answer some questions uh, we will learn about her journey, recovering and what she has learned uh, so yeah, thank you so much for coming here I'm glad to be here <laughs> so, uh, Maybe for the viewers who don't know you, can you maybe just talk a little bit about uh, like how the eating disorder maybe started for you and how did you start recovery? Um, my eating disorder started probably almost 10 years ago now um, when we moved around a lot as children. I was bullied quite a bit because I had a different accent. I was also uh, quite a skinny girl. I was just different from the others. And um, I was bullied for this, and this um, was quite bad for my self-confidence. And when we then moved to Hungary, where I didn't even speak the language, I think this was in 2007, 2008, um, I started to just sort of decrease my intake a little bit, take control of the things that I could control in this way, um, which obviously wasn't a very healthy thing to do, but... Um, yeah, it gave me a sense of control and it sort of went downhill from there. Mm -hmm. And how did you start the recovery or how did you realize that I want to now get better? At first I didn't really uh, realize. I, I realized I was quite tired. I didn't have as much energy. Things weren't going great. Um, but I only really, I guess, found out that I had an eating disorder. When my parents took me to a doctor and they told me, well, you have to put on some weight. We suspect she might have anorexia. And the first thing that really happened then was they tried to get me to drink um, Nutri drinks to put on some weight, but I didn't really want to. And then uh, from one point to the next, I was suddenly in hospital and they were actively trying to get me to gain weight. And from that point onward, I started to realize more and more that yes I did need to change and um, that's when I chose for recovery. So your, you started your recovery with uh, like from the hospital like people helping you and did you have like a treatment team and uh, like a therapist or like how did you know what to do? <laughs> um, at that time we were living in Hungary as I said and I had a therapist she was well, the only English-speaking therapist there, so I had a one-person treatment team. Mm -hmm. um, she told me, well, exactly what I had to do. She um, told me to keep an eating diary. I had therapy with her several times a week. And if I wasn't gaining weight or if I was losing weight, she'd tell me, well, the consequences of this are, and she'd just list a whole bunch of things. Um, including hospitalization, so I was also hospitalized at that point. Yeah, it was quite strange actually because I didn't really have targets or, well, the usual thing you'd be um, expected um, to have at hospitals, but I really didn't like it there, and she told me if, if you reach this weight, you can get out. So that's basically, I guess, the only reason at that point that I did want to gain weight just to get out, which wasn't the best motivation. Um, but it did help me put on some weight at first. So, how was the whole process of uh, like putting on uh, weight to uh, to get out of the hospital? Did you resist it? Uh, did you had the fear of like uh, maybe I'm gonna like gain and gain and gain? You know, like how everybody has this irrational fear. It was a bit scary, but in that hospital, I could eat the meals that my mom prepared because they didn't actually have any set meal plan so my mom would bring in her food I know I like her food so that made it a bit better um, also um, my mom would just give me the portions that she saw fit and I felt more or less obliged to eat what she gave me so in that sense I wasn't thinking about it too much but it was definitely scary and I, I was definitely worried about uh, what was going to happen, how quickly I was going to put on weight, and yeah, all, all of those worries. When you start recovering from an eating disorder, 
and you see all of those symptoms coming up like digestive issues, bloating, water retention, you see your weight can increase rapidly for some people and they take it as a sign that they are just like eating too much and they are kind of like now gonna be like ballooned and uh, so what do you recommend here or how did you deal with all of those uh, symptoms? Yeah, I was also quite stressed about those things. I think it's quite normal to have to deal with them, especially at first in recovery. I think that's also the reason why my therapist at that point told me to keep an eating diary and I would have to um, give that to her every week. She would have a look at it. And um, I think it also quite helped to have written everything down because it made me realize, well, maybe it's not as much as I thought it, I was eating um, without having to look at all the specific numbers, which um, would have probably, well, not worked for me in any case. So what was the hardest part in terms of uh, recovery for you? And how did you overcome? Um, for me, the hardest part was probably uh, water retention and bloating. This was quite bad for me at first and stressed me out quite a bit. Um, it's not something you just overcome, I guess, but you just have to, at that point, keep I mean, eating. I like, uh, mentally overcome this. Yeah, I, I told myself if I, if I keep eating, it will go away by itself. And I um, mentally, I guess, tried to trust my body in this and it just kept going, even though it was quite a scary thing to do and after a while I realized yeah this is getting better I should just keep going I should not go back to what I did before because from recovery I'll gain so much more than from my eating disorder. And how long was this period for you the bloating and the, I guess the first kind of the extreme part of like everything like the bloating, water, tension, digestive issues, how long did it last for you? Um, it's been quite a while ago so I don't remember exactly but it was a few weeks or maybe even two or three months, something like that. And um, yeah, I think it must have been something like that. And at that point, I also tried to wear some not as tight fitting clothes. And I didn't really um, look at myself in the mirror quite as much. But I think that was mostly just a bit of a protective mechanism because I knew it was something that was going to pass and... Um, that it would get better from there. Did you have the extreme hunger in your recovery? Did you have it like right away or was it kind of like, did it came like over time or? Um, I definitely did have extreme hunger, but that only um, came about after I had um, a bit of a relapse in 2015. So the entire first part of my recovery, I didn't really have normal hunger cues. I wasn't all that hungry. I felt like I was mostly just eating and that I didn't really need it, but I obviously did. Um, after my relapse, however, I started to eat more and um, started to also get hungrier, which was quite strange. Um, but yeah, I think for some people, extreme hunger is something they have throughout their recovery. For some people, it just comes and goes. For some people, they don't have it at all. But I think the important thing is just to listen to your body at those points. Because, well, you're going to have to learn to trust your body again in order for your body to trust you again. So that's what I'm doing now. Did anybody explain to you then like the concept of extreme hunger or that it's not just binging, it's not a binge eating disorder? Um, actually, no. <laughs> but... Um, I was um, myself experiencing extreme hunger and at this point I had also started my YouTube channel and people were asking me about it so I thought well this is this is a bit strange and I I did some research I asked about it a little bit and that's how I got to know more about it and now you don't have extreme hunger anymore now you just like continue eating a lot and um yeah mostly I have quite a healthy appetite but I don't think it's um, extreme hunger anymore at this point. It's just, um, yeah, just a quick metabolism and trying to keep up with what my body needs and what it is asking for. So in your in your eating disorder, you 
you lost your period as well, yes? So how do you, what do you recommend for people who don't have their period? Like what are the top things to do to get your period back? Um, I think the most important thing is probably to see, first of all, are you still restricting? Are you still over-exercising? And if so, can I change these things? Because if you're doing anything to the extreme, then that's going to affect your hormones, your mental health, and um, whether or not you have your period. Um, also, I think it's quite important to take the time to de-stress a little bit because cortisol is obviously um, going to yeah, mess with your hormones a little bit and it's not going to be beneficial. So even if you do have your period, I think it's important to take time to relax and to breathe. When you first started with your story, I remember you said something about like, uh, like gaining control in your life through your eating disorder. So how did you let go of that control? I let go of that control first by trying to take control in other areas. So focusing on my academics and being really perfectionistic in that aspect, which isn't, which isn't ideal, but it was healthier than focusing on the food. Um, currently, I am trying to let go of that control a little bit as well, just by realizing that life is just much better if you are able to let go of this control and to let go of the eating disorder as well. So to know that I will gain much more from being healthy, that I'll be much happier and yeah, that, that I just gain much more than I would if I were to stay with my eating disorder. Yeah, this is so interesting because uh, tomorrow actually, or for the viewers, it's not tomorrow, but uh, like tomorrow I'm going to post a video about uh, like how to let go of the perfectionist mindset in recovery. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like you can use the mindset of like wanting to achieve something for so many like positive reasons, like the academic reasons for your work, your goals. But in eating so the recovery, like the perfection is, is rather kind of like, like damaging because it's not possible to be perfect. Like it's not possible. And if it's not possible, then you will always feel like something is missing. You're not good enough. Like you're not worthy unless you get there, but you can never get there. So, so yeah, like I'm so glad you realized this as well, like even for your studies and stuff. And I, this is something I had to like let go and accept in myself. Uh, so, and the other thing I want to talk about, like since we went to the mindset, kind of like the perfectionist, what do you think about, uh, like some people feel that they don't, deserve recovery or they don't deserve to put on like weight or or eat so much or uh, like they have this sense of like unworthiness or they don't feel this like self-love I know this is like very broad question but just like um have you do you have any like answers to this like how to like let go of all this like bullshit <laughs> basically I think every everyone deserves self-love and um, what they used to tell me in hospital, um, just try this, try to gain weight, try to get to a healthy weight and see how it is for you. You know how to lose weight. So if you gain the weight and you don't like it, you can always go back. Mm -hmm. The thing is, once you actually gain this weight, you will realize your, your mentality changes and you will realize that recovery is so much better. And uh, once you realize this, it's also, I think in a way easier to recognize um, your strengths and to start to love yourself. Um, what I personally do is I keep a um, motivational booklet. It's on the shelf right behind you. So I write down every single day um, the things that I did that I'm proud of. And I think this also really helps um, in order to reach that place of self-love and self-acceptance. Yeah, to start to change all of the like negative thought patterns and always kind of focusing on the negativity and not so much on the like what is good in your life and what you can be proud of. Like even like little achievements in your recovery, right? 
and yeah. it doesn't that need to be like I need to be fully recovered or else like I won't accept myself but even like cheering yourself up about the first successes in your recovery or or just like wanting to recover or starting the recovery journey like focusing on the little positive steps and uh, like being grateful what you have at the moment and uh, what do you say to people who uh, who think that they will only put on weight but their mindset wouldn't change they will still feel like they're not worthy they're not good enough but just with more weight so in their mind it's not even worth to get there I would say, as my therapist said, try it out and see if that's actually the case because um, I think that naturally um, your mindset will change, your hormones change, so I think it's quite natural that your mindset will change as well. Um, It might take some time, of course. It's not going to change from one day to the next, but I feel that if you keep it up, then the other changes will come naturally as well, but you will have to work for it. So, as I mentioned, it's quite good to write down these things about yourself that you're proud of and to learn to celebrate the things that you do, that you are proud of and that you feel you have accomplished. So, along the way, all these little changes will make a big difference. And what do you think about that? Like, how important do you think is the physical recovery for your mental health as well? Because... Like uh, restriction affects your brain, like your brain is malnourished and starved. So as long as you are not eating enough, not putting on weight, like uh, like you can't even start to recover your mental health and think clearly. So uh, I want to ask you, like how was this process for you? Did you felt like you were more like irrational? Did you have more anxiety, more fear when you were like underweight? And now just by gaining weight, like this kind of changed. This changed a lot. I remember when I first started gaining weight, if they would give me a chocolate bar or um, really anything else that I feared even in the slightest, I might freak out or um, I might just run off. Um, Now, I mean, I see it's, it's just a chocolate bar. Um, am I in the mood for it? Yes, I'll have it. Am I not in the mood for it? Okay, maybe not right now, but it's it's completely different now. I used to um, make quite a big deal of everything food related, which is normal. If you're if you're starving, then your body will think about food because it wants you to get out of this starvation mode. So that is normal, and as you put on more weight, your body starts to trust that it will be fed again. So your so your thoughts change. And now if people take me out to a restaurant or if they give me this chocolate bar, for me that's just um, not a big deal anymore. Instead of thinking, oh my God, I'm going to a restaurant. What am I going to have? Are there any safe options on the menu? I'll now think, oh, uh, well... Who else is coming along? Um, what are we going to do? It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think in this way, my thoughts change completely. And also by uh, like taking action, by facing your biggest fears, not just by talking about it with your therapist, but actually like doing those things, what's scary. And, and over time, seeing that it was all just irrational fear. And uh, you talked about the, like going out with people. Many people have so much fear about like what will other people think about me. Uh, maybe they previously have been this like healthy, healthy girl or boy. And they had this image about themselves. But now they need to put on weight to get healthy and eat like the even the junk food, processed food to get over their fears. So did you went through anything similar, like like thinking that like everybody will now judge me or or what would you recommend to those people? Um, I didn't really have this fear mostly because I realized that people in my surroundings, people that are very dear to me, so my friends, my family. They would want me to put on weight. They would want me to be healthy, which was quite an important thing to keep in mind when at first it was difficult to find the motivation within myself. So I realized that other people wanted me to gain weight and I wanted to do well for them as well. 
So that was part of my motivation, in fact. And yeah, just realizing that no matter what other people think, um, being healthy will do so much more for you. And um, in terms of not only um, the physical you, but also just mentally. So like in your eating disorder, like I don't know anything specific about you, but it's kind of like very common thing that we only want to eat healthy, like our safe foods. So what do you think about the, like the unhealthy foods or junk food or eating processed food? Uh, like how was this for you? I think that's a very good question. <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier, but then it escaped my mind. So um, yeah, I think this is really important. Even though I feel like now I eat quite healthy, I do have biscuits every day. I do have chocolate every day. And I don't really think twice about it. Um, for me now, it's just food that's there to keep my energy levels up, to keep me uh, happy and running about. So I think it's really important to face your foods, to actively incorporate them into your daily diet at first. So that you get over the fear, so that it becomes, I guess, part of the routine. And so that it no longer holds any power over you. Because in this way, when you later go out with friends and they suggest ice cream or something spontaneous. Um, so that you won't freak out in the situation. So that you can still enjoy the situation. And so that later on you can just incorporate these foods if you want to. As well so I think at first it's important to actively incorporate them and then once they no longer hold any power over you you can just have them once in a while just when you feel like it incorporating those food uh, do you think it even goes when people have kind of the bloating digestive issues rapid weight gain um, because many people see that this is the problem like I'm eating too much I'm eating too unhealthy and food is the problem yeah, I think, I think even then, mm -hmm. um, especially because the cause of bloating is frequently, I believe, because people want to uh, bulk up on fruits and vegetables, which is at first quite difficult on the digestive system if you have restricted for so long. Mm -hmm. So I think even then it's important to incorporate these fear foods and know that you can have them at any point. So uh, for the end of this video because this has been like so quick <laughs> already like about half an hour in uh, so what do you want to say to our viewers uh, maybe maybe specifically to somebody who is recovering from being underweight uh, or who is kind of like facing all of the fears of gaining weight like eating more more food what do you want to say to them um i guess what is most important is that you are not in this alone I know that it's often stressed that you must gain weight that you must reach a certain weight and yes that's important also for your mental health but what's even more important I think is not to focus on that not to stress about that but to focus on life to focus on self-love and I think everything else from that point on will just fall into place naturally so just focus on all the things you will gain from recovery, all the things you will gain once you um, are healthy and enjoying life. And I think from that point onward, you can achieve anything. Uh, and I think this is very true because uh, like so often I see people like focusing on the, like how, how uncomfortable the recovery is and how bad I feel, feel today. And uh, they focus on the like recovery parts that are like so uncomfortable. But to motivate them and keep going, they actually has, have to focus on the long-term results. Like why you are doing this, why you are getting uncomfortable. It's not to like make your life miserable, but actually to make your life better, like long-term. And long-term, there are like only good things to come and focus on that instead. So yeah, I think it, this is very great. Uh, and also I want to ask, uh, so you have a book, yes? You wrote a book. So what is your yes. book about, like just a little bit about your book? Um, so the first book was published in 2014. So about The first one. I didn't ago. know you have many. <laughs> I published my second book two weeks ago. Two oh, weeks good. ago. 
So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's also available now. And I'm quite excited about that. So it's the sequel to the first one. So in the first one, we find out about Christina's story, which is in part my own story, as well as the stories of people I have met along the way in my journey. And um, yeah, Christina um, starts to get into some trouble at school and um, yeah, she falls into a depression. She starts to restrict her food and find it more and more difficult to show this self-love that we covered. Um, so the first book chronicles how she tries to fight her way out, but um, how she really struggles with this. And then the second one follows up from that, but um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens. I will guess you will have to read it then, but yeah. That's the story. Yeah, that is amazing. Uh, and we will include the links in the description, like all your like website or YouTube and your books and everything. And we're going to do like another video on your channel as well. So people can go to your channel and check the other video out. Uh, yeah, so, so thank you so much for this interview. And I wish to you like all the best and success and everything. And, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.